Hello, welcome to this lesson on malware data sets. My name is Blake Jacobs and I'm the educator at Mozo Cyber Security Institutes. Um, what I'm going to be covering first of all is the background and what is required for this exercise to be a pass and some frequently asked questions and then we'll move on to the agenda which will be in the PowerPoint slide. <clears throat> so in the background we have numerous exercises in this platform that will require you to analyze malware. Write detection signatures and how to malicious files that exhibit certain behaviors and characteristics. Some professional analysts and antivirus companies have a huge amount of goodware and malware um, with basically they've had billions of files or even petabytes worth of files. Um, this exercise helps you create your first malware data set to learn the basics of threat hunting, threat intelligence and reverse engineering. It may also prove useful for some of the Windows internal exercises that will come later on which would be really cool. Um, actions and specifications are simple, just download the 5 gigabytes worth of malware samples and yeah, it's easy, just download and done. But let's have a look at the frequently asked questions. So how can I safely download malware without infecting my machine? And this is, this is, the, um, this is the, uh, the answer here. If you don't run the malware samples in the files by themselves when infecting the machine. So if you run a malware that, on your physical machine, the physical machine is going to get infected. So the way, to, um, the way to overcome this is to run it in a virtual machine which is completely isolated from your physical machine. Now, how, why, like my, my antivirus software is preventing me from downloading the files. What should I do? Well, let's have a look at the, correct, the answer. Create a virtual machine that, does have, that doesn't have any antivirus software uh, and store the files there. Um, also, also in your antivirus solution like AVG, you can create exclusion rules um, so that folder you download in the downloads folder or your desktop, you just exclude that from being um, for, for your antivirus to actually scan that folder. Now, what is the most common reason why students fail this exercise? Well, here you go. You didn't download the malware data set. Simple as that. So let's move straight on to uh, the PowerPoint slide, and yeah, we'll talk a bit about malware and other things. Okay, so we're going to be covering in the agenda what is malware. What different types of malware exist? How do you avoid malware for being on your machine? How does antivirus software work? And then we're going to go through uh, a little technical demonstration at the end. So what is malware? Malware comes in all sorts of forms, which we will cover next. The main purpose of malware is to infect a machine and steal sensitive information such as credit card details, passwords, photos, browser history, and, all, and they could even be very destructive as well. Uh, there's also a type of malware called ransomware, which holds their victim up for ransom, ransom, which we will cover soon. So what different types of malware exist? There are lots of different types of malware. I'm going to cover a few of the most deadliest ones. Now, ransomware is where um, the attacker will encrypt the victim's files, ask for money, either if it's a Bitcoin or other some sort of transaction services, and then they will decrypt their files once they're paid um, to, to decrypt their files. Exploits, so exploits um, take advantage of a vulnerability by exploiting the machine to gain remote access. This is through like buffer overflow, stack-based buffer overflows, or even Ring Zero exploits, which sounds a little bit complex, which we will not cover here. Um, even destructive malware, this is very dangerous because malware that will infect a machine and corrupt files, registry keys, so the computer is basically rendered useless. Um, that's very very destructive malware. Our uh, rootkits is um, very dangerous as well. A rootkit is a clandestine computer program designed to provide continued privilege access to a computer while actively hiding its perfect presence. So rootkits hide in, in the computer system, um, and they it just you don't even know it's existing there, and they could be holding they could be remotely accessing your computer while you're just browsing away, you know, using the web. They could be spying on you through the webcam. It can be listened through your mic, and you wouldn't even know it's actually on your system. Very dangerous stuff. So, how do you avoid from malware? From how do you avoid malware from entering your system? Uh, there is many ways um, to avoid malware. Can be quite simple, but at times they can enter your system without even you realizing it. Make sure you always keep your machine up to date with the latest patches. Make sure you have antivirus system, uh, antivirus software scanning once per day. Uh, never open up links that look suspicious. For example, you might see a website like Gmail, um, mail, Gmail, um, 
slash net and mail.net or gmail and then mail.net. So it may be a different type of gmail URL. Um, and it may look like Gmail, might be presented like Gmail, might have the same website, but it's a different URL. So by looking at a URL, I'm comparing to see if it's the actual legit URL. Um, it's a good way to prevent from phishing attacks. Because that Gmail URL right there, that was presented on the browser. Uh, if that was a, a domain that existed and it had Gmail and everything, it could be a phishing attack. Never download software that looks suspicious. This is one way... That you can, uh, if you if you download suspicious mal uh, suspicious software, it could be malware that could enter your machine and infect it. So never download software that looks a bit sus. Now, how does antivirus software work? Now, antivirus software companies analyze new malware being released in the wild, uh, reverse engineering and finding a fix for it. Then they create a specific a specific signature for that malware, um, and then if the malware enters um, a host or a machine. Um, that antivirus detection software will then match and compare that signature to the malware. And if it's a match, then it's, um, it's malware on the machine. Uh, it sounds simple, but some antivirus software can be quite complex. It can work quite, quite differently. Uh, something scary, very scary to keep in the back of your mind is that hackers can, anti uh, can, actually, uh, can actually bypass antivirus software. It sounds very scary, and it is. And it's easy to do, to do with different techniques, which we will not cover here. Let's have a look at a technical demonstration. So there is, um, first of all, we're going to cover the frequently asked questions. Um, so first of all, um, how can you prevent yourself uh, from being from malware executing on your machine? So one way to do this is run a virtual machine. There's a VMware Player, which you can go to online. Um, and VMware Player is a free virtual machine software. There's two different sorts I like to use as VMware Workstation Player um, and VirtualBox. The VMware player is totally free. Just go to the website and download it from there. Um, and this is the website right here. Another one is VirtualBox, which is uh, a little bit better. I like VirtualBox. Uh, they both have their ups and downs. Uh, but VirtualBox is completely open source. Um, and it's very easy to set up and run it, run it and uh, either download uh, Linux or Windows um, and just run it in there. It's pretty simple. That's virtual box right there, up to 6.1. Now, some of the websites you can find exploits and malware is exploit database. Exploit database um, don't just show you, don't just uh, have exploits, but they have shell codes, they have Google Docs um, that can be used for browse, uh, web hacking, web app contesting. Um, we want to search Google for known exploits or open um, admin panels, you know, vulnerabilities and things like that. Even, even cameras are exposed on your Google. Um, they have a lot of exploits, which is a type of malware, like I said before. Um, also, the zoo can, uh, is on GitHub, which contains uh, a live malware repository. So it has a list of malware that you can download. Also, in the platform, it actually has uh, other resource references there as well, uh, which, which, which has uh, references to websites that contain malware. So it's worth having a look at there as well. So also another thing that is very important that was in the frequently asked questions is how can, another way you can actually um, run the malware on a machine or virtual machine uh, without the antivirus detection picking it up. Now, if you're using AVG for the antivirus solution, you launch AVG, then click on Tools and Advanced Settings, click on Resident Shield. On the left side of the window, there, there is an exceptions path. Um, click on... Um, the directory you want to AVG to ignore during the virus scan. Repeat these steps for each directory you want AVG to ignore. Click OK, save changes, and that should be done. And all you need to do is just type in the exclude folder in, say, Avast is another one. And it will show you there as well. So here you go, this is how you do it for Avast as well. So back to the um, PowerPoint presentation. That's about it for this lesson. Um, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on malware data set. Uh, it's very easy. It explains what you need to do in the um, in the lab. So yep, go ahead and download that malware data set, and I hope you pass it. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this lesson, and thank you very much for being a big part of the community. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Catch you later.